galaxies that make up our universe. Galaxies are large systems of stars and interstellar matter typically containing several million to some trillion stars. Galaxies can be as big as a few thousand to several hundreds of thousands of light years across and are typically separated by millions of light years distance. It is estimated that there are over a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. A light year is the distance that light travels in a vacuum in a year, about 5.88 trillion miles. We live in a giant spiral galaxy called the Milky Way Galaxy. It is a hundred thousand light years in diameter and has about a hundred billion stars. Our nearby dwarf galaxies, satellites of the Milky Way, are only a few hundred thousand light years distant, while the nearest giant neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, also a spiral, is about two to three million light years away. Galaxies come in a variety of types and shapes. Spiral galaxies usually consist of two major components, a flat, large disk, which often contains a lot of interstellar matter, dark dust clouds and gaseous nebula, with new star formation occurring. They are often arranged in striking spiral patterns, sometimes with a bar-like structure. They have a bulging center, consisting of an old stellar population without much interstellar matter, and they have an orderly rotational motion of the disk as a whole. Lenticular galaxies are spiral galaxies without the spiral structure. They are smooth disk galaxies where stellar formation has stopped long ago. Their gas and dust may have been blown away by the galaxy moving quickly through the low density intergalactic medium or used up in a rapid burst of star formation. Elliptical galaxies are smooth and elliptical in appearance and have been called cosmic footballs. They do not rotate as a whole, although the stars orbit the centers of the galaxies, and contain very little or no interstellar matter and consist of old population stars. Often due to distortion by the gravitational pull of neighboring galaxies, irregular galaxies exhibit very peculiar shapes and have no definite structure. Most irregular galaxies are small and faint. Dwarf irregular galaxies may be the most common type in the universe. Stars are bunched up and randomly distributed. Some have a lot of dust and star formation. Others have very little star formation going on. In 1936, the astronomer Edwin Hubble first divided galaxies into the three basic groups, elliptical, spirals, and irregulars. He organized the galaxies in a certain way, because he thought that galaxies started out as ellipticals and then changed to spirals and then to irregulars. Astronomers now know that is not what happens, because every type of galaxy has very old stars. The oldest stars in any galaxy all have about the same age of around 13 billion years. That means that spirals formed as spirals, ellipticals as ellipticals, and irregulars formed as irregular galaxies. However, Hubble's original classification of galaxies is still used today. Ancient observers have known the Milky Way, and in the Southern Hemisphere, the large and small Magellan Cloud are satellite galaxies since prehistoric times. There are speculations that the Andromeda Galaxy was observed and recorded by Babylonian observers around 1300 BC. It was known to Persian astronomers before 900 AD and cataloged and described by Persian astronomer al-Sufi in 964 AD. All other galaxies have been discovered only after the invention of the telescope. By 1771, Charles Messier and other astronomers had discovered 40 galaxies, and beginning in 1783, William Herschel found and cataloged over 2,000 more. Most stars in a galaxy are not single lonely stars like our sun, but occur in pairs called binaries or multiple systems. Besides many individual stars, galaxies also contain globular star clusters, large but compact collections of a hundred thousand to several million stars. Galaxies also contain the remains of old exploded stars called supernova remnants or planetary nebula, and interstellar clouds are places of star formation called star forming nebula. Galaxies are distributed fairly uniformly across the sky. Approximately the same number are seen in every direction you look, except for a narrow band along the Milky Way. That narrow band is created by the dust in the disk of the Milky Way, and the galaxies along that line of sight would be visible if the dust were not there. Since radio waves are not affected by dust, radio surveys have shown that there are in fact galaxies everywhere. The distribution of galaxies is not perfectly smooth, as galaxies tend to clump together. Three-dimensional maps of the universe have revealed that galaxies like to group together, and those groups like to congregate together too. 
Galaxies' mutual gravity draws them into clusters that can be several millions of light years across. Some clusters have only a handful of galaxies and are called poor clusters. Other clusters with hundreds to thousands of galaxies are called rich clusters. Our Milky Way is part of a poor cluster called the local group. It is about 3 million light years across with the two large spirals, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy, dominating the two ends. Each large spiral has several smaller galaxies orbiting them. The local group has two large spirals, one small spiral, two ellipticals, at least 19 irregulars, and at least 20 dwarf galaxies. The proportions of the different types of galaxies in the local group probably represents the number of different types in the rest of the universe. The closest large cluster to us is the moderately rich cluster called the Virgo Cluster because it is in the direction of the Virgo constellation as seen from Earth. It has many hundreds of galaxies, mostly spirals and irregulars, distributed into an irregular shape about 10 million light years across. It is about 49 to 59 million light years from us. This clustering phenomenon does not stop with galaxies. Galaxy clusters attract each other to produce superclusters of tens to hundreds of clusters. Their mutual gravity binds them together into long, thin, string-like structures 300 to 900 million light years long, 150 to 300 million light years wide, and 15 to 30 million light years thick. Between the superclusters are huge voids with very few, if any, galaxies. Two pioneers in the mapping of the structure of the universe are Margaret Geller and John Hutra. They and their students took thousands of spectra of galaxies along thin pie-shaped slices of the sky over 15 years to produce a map 400 million light years across that shows the arrangement of the superclusters of galaxies. In 2003, the Anglo-Australian Observatory released a much larger survey of 221,000 galaxies and slices extending over 1.5 billion light years. That took five years to complete. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey surveyed one quarter of the entire sky over eight years, creating the most recent three-dimensional maps containing more than 930,000 galaxies. The arrangements of the superclusters and the voids show us a lacy, foamy structure that looks like a bunch of soap bubbles, or Swiss cheese with the galaxies on the borders of the huge holes. No one knows what exactly produces the long, thin strands of clusters around the huge bubbles of empty space. Gravity is the force at work, but how it has worked to produce the structures is not yet known. Dark matter must play a significant role, but how is a subject for ongoing investigation. According to our current scientific understanding, most galaxies form during a comparatively short period at about the same time, within the first billion years after the universe started to expand from an initial hot state. Thus, they are all almost as old as the universe itself, somewhere between 10 and 15 billion years. It is thought that galaxy formation started when clouds of gaseous matter, hydrogen and helium, called protogalaxies, started to collapse by their own gravity. According to computer simulations, the variety of galaxies that form from protogalaxies are based on different factors, such as the amount of initial angular momentum, as well as their later evolution in their environments, such as interacting with other neighboring galaxies. All galaxies are moving rapidly away from each other. The farther the galaxy is, the faster it's moving. This relationship between speed and distance is called Hubble's Law. Most galaxies also contain a dense galactic nucleus, like a very large globular cluster. And in many cases, galactic nuclei contain supermassive dark objects, most likely candidates for black holes. But that's another story. This is Rita Carl, Director of Education for Challenger Center for Space Science Education, signing off.